Today we're going to talk about the gravitational redshift through the use of an energy conservation approach. First of all, what is the gravitational redshift? Redshift means wavelength of the light is shifted to the longer side. Gravitational redshift means if you emit a light from bottom of the building, and when you observe the light at the higher altitude or top of the building, you will see wavelengths is shifted to the longer side. And why? We're going to talk about this today. First of all, light, photons, has an energy. Usually the energy is proportional to the frequency, omega zero. H bar omega zero is the energy of the photons. Secondly, Einstein said all the particles has energy, the energy is equal to mc squared. Remember, light does not have a rest mass, m, but it does have energy. So light particle actually has a mass. The mass of the light particle should equal to e over c squared. In this case, you can say h omega 0 over c squared. That's the mass of the light. If you try to move that light from, for example, uh, position A to a higher attitude, position B, the distance H, then you have to overcome the gravitational potential energy. In that case, you have to provide the work. Let's say I have to provide the work to overcome the gravitational potential energy, mgh. This m0 means the mass at the frequency 0 of the light. Okay, with that, we're going to start talking about the gravitational redshift. First of all, assume that we have a big rocket or big building on top of the surface of the Earth. Inside building, we have an atom. Let's say atom has electrons circulating around its core. And the, the, at, but atom usually have a multiple electron, multiple electron has a multiple energy levels. Let's say this electron occupy much energy level E1. And uh, then eventually it will emit a photon and uh, come down to a lower level of energy level E0. So when the light is emit by this atom, it will emit h omega zero. And that's the energy of the photons. That energy, according to Einstein, should equal to h omega zero equal to E1 minus E0. When the electron from high energy level drop to low energy level, it emit photos with such energy which is equal to the difference of the energy levels. And at the bottom, we have observer. Try to observe the frequency when you receive it. So this is uh, observer B, this is emitter A. So the, our question is, when observer B detected this photo and what a frequency it will see. Assume that frequency, so H, 
uh, frequency will be omega 1, the energy of photo when it received is h omega 1. Okay. The distance between A and B, we can call it H. Now, in order to look at the what energy observe B is going to receive, we'll assume another case here. We assume there's a big building or the rocket again sitting on top of the surface of the Earth. Instead, we calculate directly. We are try to look at a, a few cases. First of all, we'll have a, this auto starting with the ground floor. And the auto will have energy level E1. Then we're going to lift this up to the top of the building. We still have energy level E1. When we lift up, we are going to provide uh, work in order to overcome the potential, uh, gravitational potential. The work we're going to overcome is M1GH. M1 is the mass of the atom. This M1GH is the energy we need to provide, which equals to E1 C squared GH. Then we assume this atom at the top is going to emit the photo and uh, come down to the lower energy state E0. And uh, the photon is going to be emitted. Eh? That should be omega 0. Omega 0 equal to E1 minus E0. H omega 0 equal to E1 minus E0. From there, we're going to move this atom back down to its original place. This is the original place, which just in order to make uh, the clear, we draw this a slight different uh, position, but they're exactly at the same position, okay? When we move atom from top to bottom, Actually, it gives us uh, energy. The energy is M0GH in this case, because the energy level of the atom is E0. So this one should be equal to E0 C squared GH. Okay, now if I look at the entire process, we have a initial stage and the initial stage energy level is the U1. Then we add, we add E1 C squared GH. This is the energy to overcome potential energy go onto the top of the building. Then it emits light and it's come back down. The light come back when it's received at the bottom should be energy received. And by the time it come down, it's only half energy E0. But it also from top to bottom, it come down, it give up energy. So all this energy should be conserved based on energy conservation. So in that case, we know this E photo received should equal to H omega 1, that's the received frequency, should equal to E1 minus E0 plus 
e y minus e zero over c square g h. In this is equal to h omega zero one plus g h over c square. From this, we can conclude omega y equal to omega zero one plus g h over c square. That means at the bottom of the building, when we received omega y is bigger than omega zero. Omega zero is the frequency emit at the top. Omega y bigger than omega zero, or omega zero is smaller than omega y. Omega is frequency. When omega zero is smaller than omega one, then its related wavelengths would be bigger. What does it mean? Does it, that means the frequency, the wavelength in this case at the top, wavelength at the top is longer than wavelength. So, so this is wavelength. Wavelength at the bottom. At the top of building, the wavelength is longer than at the bottom of the building. Effectively, when you emit the light from the bottom to the high altitude, the wavelengths will be redshift. When you have a light going from top to High attitude, let's say satellite. This is Earth. And this is red. The bottom is more blue. So this uh, when you emit the light from the Earth to the high attitude in the gravitational field, the wavelength is getting redder. And this is so-called uh, gravitational wavelength redshift. This is uh, very important uh, for the global positioning system since we're using a uh, light uh, communication. And between Earth and the satellite, and the frequency and wavelengths of those kind of communication channels will become uh, critical. We have to make sure to compensate any of the gravitational redshift in all our calculations and predictions in you know, order to make sure we have an accurate uh, uh, positioning system. Thanks for watching.